pathways for analysis of foods, minerals, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And are you in business? Is it a business that you that you're in? I am a businessman. I'm the the founder of the business. It's called Coricon. All right. You Always know, check it out. Yeah. We have a business all over East Africa. Awesome. So, do you do any work? So, all your work is in Africa. Do you do any work in Europe or um, North America? Anywhere else? So, you guys, because you import from here, the food that comes from here, I have to check it. Then you eat it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like uh, a lot of testing of of tea that comes from Kenya. Okay. Coffee that almost everybody takes. When you see the cup of coffee, just know that we have tried. We've tested that. It's good. Okay. Just things that go for export. Oh, it's awesome! That's awesome. And how long have you been in? Uh, how long have you been in, in business? How long has your business been going? Uh, fifteen years. Fifteen years. Good. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. Long time. And so, if I were to if I were going to come to uh, if I was going to come to Kenya, where's the what's the first thing that you would want to show me in Kenya? Well, what we have very unique is the fact that uh, where I'm sitting, I'm only about. Uh, Two kilometers from where the animals are in the wild. Okay. Wow. I mean, the first thing you'd like to see is might be the wildebeest, to be, uh, the lions, the elephants. Okay. They're just here. I can walk wow. there from here. Okay. And this is a town. <laughs> and which do you is get neighboring? And do you get nervous? They are friendly. They are nice. They are, once you get used to them. But the first place I'll take you is from the airport. The airport is almost, uh, say, a kilometer from the National Park. You right. can just walk from the airport to inside the, the National Park. It's a fantastic place. In fact, when you are coming to, to land into Nairobi, yeah. you will see the animals. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to come. But, uh, yeah, you should, because the other place where I live, which is beautiful place, is the Mombasa. It's at the, at the coast. Yeah. Yeah. Very white beaches. Beautiful place to live. Beautiful. A beautiful place to work. I think so few, uh, so few North Americans have been to Africa. I've, you know, I've been to South Africa twice a couple of years ago and was uh, absolutely uh, in, loved the experience. And would love to go back. And I know my wife would love to go back to, uh, would love to go to Africa with me and travel. And so, uh, you know, we've got friends in uh, South Africa now, but now we have a friend in Kenya. And uh, so I would love to. Now, is it, is it, is it, am I okay to drive? Can I drive from South Africa to Kenya? No, it's far. It's far. It's far. It's we are far. very far from. And of course, the connecting, the connecting countries, you might not get the kind, the kind of drive unless you like adventure. Uh, Guys drive, <laughs> but you have to have adventure. You're not going to get the 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 autobahns or the the big streets that you have in America. That yeah, you can, yeah. you know, one time I came to to LA and I thought I could actually uh, drive to New York, and then I realized yeah. it's far. It's the same it's thing in South Africa, not in your Kenya. Yeah, but well, I live, in, I live in Canada, so we're you know, which is the second biggest country in the world. Um, so we're used to driving, uh, look a thousand kilometers, 2000 kilometers. We're used to doing stuff like that, but yeah, if it's not safe, we don't, we don't like too much adventure. No, the problem is the infrastructure is not as good as there. You okay. know, you don't yeah. have uh, those streets where you can boom with your vehicle. Here are yeah. some of the places, are no roads at all. You have to start discovering some, <laughs> not, it's not very, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love Africa. Yeah, it's the way it's supposed to have been. You know, if you come here, you yeah. find it very exciting. Yeah. Okay, in town, it's fantastic. Yeah. Between cities, it's fantastic. Yeah. But in some countries, it's a bit dangerous also. All right. All right. Hey, Dominic, hold okay. on for just a sec. I'm going to see if I can bring Mark in. Uh, I, I, I see him chatting on the side here. So I'm going to see if we can get him in uh, to the show here because uh, we really want to talk about brand. And, uh, Mark, yeah, there's something at your end that is just not letting. I know yesterday, I know on Tuesday we had fantastic connection, and uh, you must be using a 
uh, I don't know, some kind of string, a knotted string in order to attach to the to the, uh, the internet. And it's just not working for me. So I'm going to pull you out. And instead of what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, I'm going to see if uh, Murray, uh, who is a local guy, so we're going to see if we can get local, uh, local going. So Murray, let's come on in and talk to my friend Dominic in Kenya. Okay. Good morning. Murray. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can hear you fine. Fine. It's all good. I'm a little blurry this morning and I, I just woke up. <laughs> so here's the yeah so here's the pro trick for for you guys when you're doing shows like this you know it's the, called the cnn stare it's when you look right into the uh you look right into the uh camera uh right so even though you <laughs> oh, yeah okay good no this is a captain jack scare stare story yeah exactly yeah so murray what is it that you do in victoria i have uh in Victoria, I am the CEO of a company called AHI Factor uh, Core Systems, and what AHI uh, is in is in the sector of food security, and it's creating a cooperative platform for micro farms um, all over the planet, but first starting in North America, and that, uh, so they can deal with uh, the issue of uh, really soil erosion and uh, the problem that is faced humanity or the population of the world, which is simply in 57 years, we run out of soil, we run out of food. And that's the long and short of it. Anybody that's interested in this particular uh, issue and a uh, problem and like to see what we're doing in it, uh, certainly through Alex or myself, uh, pop me off an email and I'll send you a boatload of stuff back and I would welcome everybody. I'm gonna be using this interface. Uh, I've known Alex for, um, for a long time, and uh, he's done a marvelous job with this uh, this interface. Yeah, it's uh, I'm actually younger. I'm his younger brother. Anyways, the uh, so Alex and I have known each other for a long time. I followed a bunch of his different um, uh, different ventures and everything else. This is uh, marvelous, and we'll be using this platform within the micro farm phases that we plan for uh, globally in North America, so we can use this interface and that, so that people can communicate in their communities um, themselves uh, uh, and in batches of about uh, 18, 1900 with an outreach of probably five, 600,000 people per phase. Wow. And there's gonna be 16 wow. phases for North America and uh, that'll cover the population. If we do it right or help people do it right, we, we create the monetary platform for this thing and the communication and the technology yeah. that we can then take a look at the soil and see what the soil is doing awesome. on a day-to-day -day basis. But the process is, is to bring that community together so that they can then, um, it's a, a bit on the crowdfunding side, bring that community together so that they can afford to start their farms, facilitate their farms, and really lend them money on a, on a human ingredient or on a human factor, uh, which is in the name. And that- Beautiful. So you're, so you're, trying, to sa you're trying to save the world. And- uh, Piece of and cake. <laughs> Piece of cake. And I know Dominic's trying to save the world and we're trying to connect with face to face. We're trying to connect the world and give you guys the tools Excellent. Uh, so that you can. Yeah. So just on that note, I think we, I think we might have another guest here. So, uh, which is why <laughs> we're all here. So let's see if we can get Mark's face up and running here. Mark, it is struggling and it's just not going to happen. Alex. Yes. I had the same issue. I did a test of the platform on my side, and I was going off of a tablet, and the tablet yep. wouldn't uh, – I couldn't uh, get it involved. You know, you guys are working on that stuff. It's all fair. That's why we're in a beta vision. Uh, uh, yep. But it's, if it's a if it's tablet-based um, on uh, uh, Chrome and that I had – I can see you. I can come in, but I can't right. do a session, and I can't be brought into a session. And I can't okay. drag my picture into a session and that, but I sent you guys off an email about that. Yeah, yeah, tablets, we know that. Tablets, we know that. That'll be fixed in the next couple of days. So uh, when I'm when I'm down in California uh, next week, all I will have yeah, is you. my cell phone. All I will have is my cell phone. And I'll be running uh, shows right from my cell phone, including the ability to bring people in and yeah. take people out of the, of the thing. So Sweet. yeah, it's good for trying. Yeah, yeah. So listen, I'm going to... Um, uh, I, I'm running without an agenda at this point. So uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just show people just uh, briefly uh, a, a little bit about this technology. And I'm going to see if Mark comes in once again, we'll try it again. 
Um, but I also want to let people know who showed up and wanted to see Mark and get his book. We'll we'll put that link up in just a in just a second. But uh, if you guys just hang with me, what what I want to do is just I just want to show a couple of slides. And so, uh, give me a sec, and we will. Here we go. What I want to do is just show you that we can easily create, have a meeting or a. I get to be talking to a million people here with uh, with two or three or five or ten people who want to come in and join the show, like like Murray and Dominic. And at the same time, I can be showing slides or video or anything like this. So what I'm trying to do now is just I want to show you three slides that shows you how easy it is to create this type of meeting or this type of session. So the first thing is you go to go to F2F Live, which is over here in your browser, and then you'll get to this particular screen. Just click start a broadcast, click start a broadcast. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just. I'm going to keep my guests on Murray and Dominic, so don't go away, guys. I'm going to bring you back. All I all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to I'm just going to remove us from the screen so that everyone else can see just the slide deck. So once you've got uh, once you've clicked, go, uh, oops, I'm a fast mouse here. Once you've uh, clicked start a broadcast or start a meeting or start a webinar, down at the lower right corner, just off the screen here you'll see a little window that looks like this. And here's where you invite people into your meeting. So you click the email button, it'll pop up an email window uh, with the link to your meeting already in it. And you just simply select the people you want to invite into the meeting and, and press send and there, there they go. Or you can tweet them or send them a Facebook message or anything else, right? Once you do that, people will start, uh, you'll be back here. All you have to do now is click go F2F and you're live. So as soon as I click that, I'm now live, and people will start to show up in the guest queue down at the bottom here. And as you and then you just bring them in, you just pull them into the show, and uh, and you're now having a meeting. Two, three, four, five people, six people, seven people, all in their browser, uh, all able to see and hear what you're doing, but also anyone also able to pop in to the show just like this, and um, uh, and go. So that's just that's how simple it is. So thank you for that commercial. Mark's giving it one last try. I'm going to see if we can't bring him in. Hey. <laughs> let me give you a face, let me give you a face to face tip. Um, I'm, I'm working at an ad agency here and uh, they have ultra fast Wi-Fi and yep. something blocked it. So as a last resort, I just switched to toggle my phone and it worked. So now I'm running the Wi-Fi off my phone, but um, there, I guess there's a lesson learned in there. I thought I was in. I thought there was something wrong with the system, but it turns out the Wi-Fi here, maybe it was a firewall that was blocking it or something. Well, that's very, that's very interesting. Yeah. And uh, you and I, you know, normally I would never do this without having a chance to test the connections like we did on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for a guest. But uh, yeah, it turns out that that uh, uh, well, yeah, I was, I was, it's, that's entirely my fault. And I want to apologize for everybody who's listening uh, because I was doing a presentation at this ad agency. And so things just backed up. All right. Well, and it sounds like you're, uh... so I don't apologize. Yeah. What? So yeah, you guys are, yeah, Mark, we're your that connection's too skinny. We're uh, I, I think we're gonna have to do I think we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna see I'm just gonna pull Murray back into the guest uh, queue off mm -hmm. the screen. Dominic, I'm gonna say hi to you as well, and I'm gonna thank you. I'm gonna pull you back into the guest queue as well. So those guys are still available, and we're gonna see if we can't get so Mark, just tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll see whether this connection works. All right, are you, are you guys getting me? Yeah, yeah, are you're you okay. hearing me, Alex? Yeah, yeah, we're, oh, yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, well, I'm Mark Stoiber, and I'm a brand consultant, and I've been working in uh, this business for 25 years now. Uh, I got my start in, in Hong Kong, working at an ad agency, and then I went to Europe and worked, and then I came back to North America, worked in Toronto, Vancouver, a little bit in New York. And uh, now, because it seemed like the logical place to go, just up, 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 I moved to Victoria, so uh, the hotspot. Awesome. And, and that's where I am, and that's uh, working mainly uh, building brands now of startups and working in the tech sector, sustainability, and healthcare. So yeah, been doing brands for a long time all over the world. So what does it mean? What does it mean, Mark, to build a brand? Like, what does that mean? 
what does it mean? It means to build, um, a, it, I guess it's a bit like a, a human relationship. It's like, it, it's, it's to build a human relationship. Um, a brand is on the one hand, a promise that you make to a customer. Right. And on the customer's behalf, it's an expectation they have of you. So it's it's like a, a brand is is the glue of the relationship. It is that it is that go between on your hand the promise, on my hand the expectation I have of you. And a, a brand is is one of those things that can help us bridge between uh, people and all the noise that's out there in the world. You know, it's it's like the little prince where there was a, a million roses in the rose garden, but his rose was special. She didn't look any different, but she was special. Yeah. And it's the same thing with people. You know, there's a million kids out there, but your kids are special. Um, with a brand, there can be a million people who make running shoes, but Nike is special. I have a relationship with them. And yeah. that is what a brand does. So a lot of us, so it's awesome. A lot of us, when we go through a branding exercise, oftentimes we think it means creating a logo or a tagline or something like that. I mean, is that is that what that means or is there more to it than that? There, a logo and a tagline are a manifestation of a brand. It's like uh, an airplane that has, uh, you know, a new logo painted on the tail fin. It looks very, very shiny. Right. But a brand, that's just an expression of the brand. The, the real brand lives in the experience, just like a human relationship. You know, somebody can dress in a certain way and walk and talk in a certain way. And yeah. those are manifestations of their brand, but it's truly their their character and personality, the experience you have with them on a day to day basis, that is the brand. So uh, you, you, I would hear now words like authenticity. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that relate to this this logo and our tagline and what we're trying to achieve with building this brand? Uh, uh, it's funny. Authenticity <clears throat> is like synergy. It's co-opetition. It's one of the most used, most abused, least understood words in the whole wide world. Um, right. It came back, it came to us uh, from the rise of sustainability and uh, social uh, as a sort of a, a sort of a new twist on how to sell things uh, prior to to the world of social and even online digital. Uh, yeah. If a company told you something, you you weren't really in any position to doubt them. You couldn't really go investigate if they had a sweatshop. You had to wait for CBS, ABC, NBC to go send their camera crews. Dreaded 60 minutes interview, right? Exactly. And I mean, that just didn't happen. So uh, what happened then with the, with the revolution of digital, uh, citizen journalists took it upon themselves to go dig into if what a brand was actually telling us that they're good guys was true. Or were they telling us they were good guys and doing a little double dealing, running a sweatshop in Pakistan? And if that happened, then that was brand betrayal. Imagine a good friend of yours said that they're, you know, they're kicking the gambling. They're going to go on the straight and narrow, but they just want to borrow 200 bucks just to get them just one more. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sit right. And that's the same thing with, uh, with what happened with digital. And then you bring sustainability into this thing. And there's a, a sort of a compassion for others around you, for the community, for the planet. And if you yeah. saw people that didn't care for those things, they were sort of being inauthentic to the larger cause, which is to drive uh, a better planet for all of us and a better community and better relationships with people. Combine digital and sustainability, and you have this new thing called authenticity. So, so it strikes me that authenticity, like the brand, you, you said brand is the promise. You mm -hmm. know, we... Uh, you know, we're going to deliver this to the customers and then the customers are going to have an experience of you or they're going to see messages about you on social media or newspaper or 60 minutes. And and if those things align, if those things kind of meet, then you're you, you're authentic. Your brand message is authentic. Yes. But if it's not, then there's this inauthenticity, which it turns. I mean, it, it kills, doesn't it? Like if if you if you say you're great. Like you, you talked about on Tuesday, like fly the friendly skies. And now it turns out that you can be dragged off an airplane. And somebody's, and and somebody's filming you. That's the big deal, right? Oh, it's true. Oh you, can't, you can't throw PR at it. It's on, it's on film. Right. Yeah, it's exactly right. So that highly inauthentic. And it's that gap in the, in the authenticity that that's where people have like this whole trust thing, right? If you say you're like this and you do that, fair enough. But if you say you're like this and you do that, now how can I trust now, you? So it goes one further than that, though, because with the rise of sustainability, authenticity also came to represent goodness. You know that you were a genuine good person. You weren't, a, you know, a son of a gun. 
Um, yeah. and, and so authenticity came to represent not just being true to yourself because Donald Trump, God love him, he's true to himself. Uh, but it doesn't mean I'm going to buy his stuff. Uh, but being like an Yvonne Schwinnard at Patagonia, you go, hey, this guy's got his heart in the right place. Yeah. I'm going to buy his stuff because he's a good dude. That's authenticity when it works. What it's been degraded to, though, is authenticity is shaky commercials that look like they were shot with an iPhone or people um, bad-mouthing each other or talking off the cuff because it's authentic yeah. conversation. No, it's not. Um, that has nothing to do with an authentic brand. It has to do with bad behavior and crappy production. All right. All right. Well, good. Hey, listen, we've, we've talked about big companies. We've talked about Donald Trump and everything else, but most of the people that are, you work with, that I work with, in fact, most of the, by far the largest number of companies that are out there are small companies, you mm -hmm. know, people who are one person, 10 people, 40 or 50 people at the most. H how is it? I mean, it's tough. We, we don't, we're not schooled in brand. Brand doesn't show up really. I mean, I think I got one course in brand when I took my MBA and it was just, you know, I've long forgotten it, but, but it seems to be so vitally important. How does, how do we, what's the three, what three things can you tell us a step-by-step -step, I can go and build my brand? Uh, I think there, I can tell you one step and let's keep it real simple. It's like an one Apple step. computer. The only thing you need to know is to plug it in. Um, okay. The uh, building a building a great brand comes down to one simple thing, and that is talking to, but mainly listening to other people. Because a brand, a bit like a person, imagine you're going for a performance review, and what does your boss do? They don't tell you what they think of you. They do a 360 degree review of your behavior from other people. They they find out what other people think of you. Right. If you want to build a brand, find yeah. out what other people actually value in you. And it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting because a lot of times, what you believe you're good at is not what other people see you being good at. What you think you're good at is actually what you wish you were good at. You know, you wish you were a good basketball player, but you're not. You're just a guy who knows how to uh, entertain people. So you entertaining is just like ah. So I'm good at that. So what? That's what I do anyway. Uh, I'm a basketball player. You know you're not. Stay away from basketball. Stick to entertaining. If you are a brand, let's say you are a clothing brand, uh, and you might be under the delusion that you are a high fashion brand, but you're not. People come to you because you're a nice guy to talk to and you're reliable and you've got good ten t uh, taste. Listen right. to the people. They will tell you what you're good at. And I think if more people were honest and honestly listening there would be a lot better brands out there because it's not a logo. In fact, I say that a logo doesn't matter. It's not a tagline. Tagline just makes things clear, helps you with SEO. It's not even a name, right. but it comes down to the experience that you give people. And if yeah. they feel that you align truthfully with the experience they get, they go, that's a good brand. Wow. Well, you're just using feel and experience and align. Those are, those are three words that mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd love to hear coming from you. And it, and, you know, when I, when I, when I, you know, I teach a course and, and so what little I teach about brand is to say that, you know, you can put the nicest logo up there, uh, right? But what ends up happening is that people start to have, out of their experiences with you and with that logo, they start to have a feeling about you. And that feeling is either going to be increasingly good or increasingly bad. And so the, 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 it, the logo is just the symbol that they hang this emotion on. So, you know, think about like, you know, the golden arches or think about the Nike swoosh or think about Apple or, you know, BMW or Harley or whatever brand you have. And as soon as you envision that logo, you have an emotional response to it, which is which comes from the experience. And so what you're saying is that's what brand is. Brand is that that felt experience amongst your audience. And the best way we, we we can kind of connect to our brand is to listen to people mm -hmm. and hear what kind of emotional experience they're having when they talk to us. And and then what do you do with that? I, I guess I, that just before we jump off that, I have one terrific example. Um, yeah. Swastikas. Ooh, swastikas. It's yeah. a it's an ancient a Asian good luck symbol. Wow. Yeah. If you go through China, uh, you see swastikas everywhere, and trust me, they're not Nazis. Uh, you see swastikas everywhere. They have them in their railings. Uh, they have them in their picket fences. Really? They have swastikas. And wow. it's an ancient Asian good luck symbol. <laughs> and, it, you know, 
it's a symbol and it's the association, the experience we have with that symbol that dictates what that symbol means. You know, yeah. you take a, you know, you have that 1939 experience and suddenly all that good luck kind of goes away. You know, yeah, yeah, Enron yeah. had a terrific logo. Yeah, it did. It was a great. Enron logo. had a terrific yeah. logo. Yeah. The e that was, uh, that was on the side. Yeah. Right? Wonderful yeah. logo. Wonderful yeah. logo. So <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> Hey, speaking of speaking of wonderful and uh, simplicity, I want to bring up a slide here. Uh, this is something that that uh, is on the cover of your book, and uh, let me see how I can do this best. There it is, and I'm just going to get us out of the way for a minute. So the name of your book is "Didn't See It Coming," mm -hmm. and uh, th this is all that's on the cover. Mm -hmm. Is um, is it, so? Tell me about this. Tell me about the book, but also talk about the cover a little bit. Well, the book. Uh, I'm interested personally in stories uh, like Smith Corona typewriters, a company that was at the height of its powers and four years later was in chapter 11. Uh, a company that had for almost 100 years been a leader in innovation and patents, a company that came up with things like the personal assistant, the PDA, the predecessor to the phone, and then just went away. How did that happen? Wow. We didn't see it coming. So my particular take on this is advertising and how advertising, smart, smart, smart people, absolutely yeah. got hammered by the digital revolution and they didn't see it coming um and that's yeah. where that's where that that's where that idea comes from now the beauty of this is uh i came to the ad agency i went and talked to the folks at rethink about this great ad agency in vancouver um and i said i want you to design a cover for me but the important thing is i want to give you a brief on it what i think it represents and then I want you to go away and come back with something that surprises me. And it's that outsider's perspective. I could have never come up with that head in the garbage can ever, ever, ever. It took an outsider looking at it going, this is what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wonderful because, yeah, you know, awesome. it follows all the basic rules. Excuse me. It follows all the basic rules of branding, which is you can spot it 50 feet across at a book fair. Uh, 50 feet yeah. across the room. It works wonderful on a, on a slide. Uh, when yeah. I, when people say it, they go, what's that? What's that? What's that all about? So it starts a conversation and then you get to tell them what you represent. Yeah, it's unforgettable. Once you, once you see it, unforgettable. Once you see it, that's it. You, it's in, it's in the yeah. head. And I, I love that. I love that. But, and, and so everyone here who's, uh, who's on the show here is going to get, uh, is going to get your book at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Um, What's the one thing that they're going to, like, why would they even open it? They're going to get it for it? free, which is awesome. Uh, why would they open it? What are they going to get out of it? Uh, well, I hope what they're going to get out of it is uh, there's there's different takes for different people. I wrote it on purpose for different audiences. I've had 70-year-old ladies read it, friends of my, uh, my mother-in-law, who loved it because it was this fun little trip through the implosion of advertising. So it's sort of like an insider's view of Mad Men, the sequel, the nasty sequel. And then it also gives you tips on how to avoid that, how to build a more future-proof brand through things like deep insight, sustainability, using social as a listening tool, design, super important in a post-literate uh, multicultural age, tools like that. Yeah. So how to, how to actually build a brand. And it kind of leads wow. you to think, you know, what could I be doing better? What am I ignoring? How am I making things too complicated? So... The first half of the book is just a fun read for anybody who wants to see advertising in the death spiral. And the second part is a fun read for anybody who wants to save advertising and save branding. Well, that's awesome. Well, listen, I, I know that I, I've got your book and I was one of the, I think I paid for, I know I paid for it uh, through, I think it was Amazon. Yeah, if you only would have waited for this broadcast, I could have given it to you for free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a delightful read. Uh, lots of uh, lots of space. Lots of good stories. It's a it's a real delightful romp. And I walked away thinking, you know, I got, I put it in the shelf and it's and it's and it's there. But I I, I put it there as a reminder and uh, to as to as to what branding is all about. You know, the simplicity, the ethos, the uh, authenticity, the alignment, the all the, the experience, all the things we've been talking about. And then in the lead up to to this interview. And uh, last week, I went on your website, and I just want to, you know, you hear about the the shoemakers' kids, right, who don't have any shoes, uh, you know, that type of story. Well, I went to your website just to see whether you actually live and breathe what you preach, and I was delighted to see this. This is uh, Mark's the homepage of Mark's website. It's other than the, you know, the 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 the, the, uh, the name of the of the company here, it's got six words. 
Uh, four words that tell you what he's on about, and then a call to action. Uh, this, I was delighted. In fact, this is what uh, convinced me, Mark, that you should actually be uh, coming on the uh, on the show today. Because there's lots of people out there who preach something and then actually don't deliver, mm -hmm. and we don't want to talk to those people. That is, that's not authentic. But you are as about as authentic as they get. So I just, I, I just wanted to thank you for for that. Um, and now we, we got, got a, we got to deconstruct you, man. We got to deconstruct you. I'm looking at the background. I'm looking at the plant. You know, <clears> you're you're dressed in a black turtleneck. You got, and you've got a fantastic haircut, and you got like the very trendy beard. You look every bit the uh, the very very smart strategy guy. And then I look at the plant, and I go, <laughs> What happened? Yeah, well, well, you know. And here's the thing: for people who don't know this story yet, um, I've been working with the with the face to face team for oh, six months now. No longer than that, a, almost a year. But over the last six months, we have been really struggling with the, with how to name this thing. Uh, absolutely brutal. And uh, Mark came along, uh, you know, about a month ago or six weeks ago, and he sat down. I said, "Man, I'm just, you know, all this blood on my forehead is from banging my forehead on the wall." And uh, he says, "Well, what do you do?" I says, "Well." Well, we, we were able to talk to a lot of people, like a million people. He goes, well, it's kind of it's broadcasting, right? Yeah, it's broadcasting. And he says, but but what else do you do? I mean, because that's anyone can do that. He says, well, but we allow any one of those people to come in and talk to us face to face. And so he says, well, what you do is face to face broadcasting. I know, I'm a genius. And I just went, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yes. It's so, so true. If you get somebody on the outside to tell you something obvious, and I do this all the time, that's why I do so much research. I have interviews and talk to folks and chat. And then I come back with the idea that they gave me. And all I do is turn it around just a little bit to give it a bit of sparkle. And they go, how did you think of that? And I go, because I'm a genius. You know, it's <laughs> you well, have right. the idea, but, but uh, it's uh, hidden in plain sight. That's right. And, but then you had to do the same thing in order to get the cover of your book. Oh, yeah. Like I could the... never, ever have yeah. come up with that cover. Let me let me just underline that. And I want to talk to you one more about one thing. Just You talked about simplicity. I would have yeah. never have come up with simplicity as what makes me special. Um, when I went on my own as a consultant, I, I, prior to that, I was a creative director at a couple of really big ad agencies, and I ran my own ad agency. And, uh, and then I, I went on my own as a consultant. So I said to my old boss, I said, what is it that makes me special? And I expected that he'd say, you're a creative genius, you're innovative, you're some, I don't know, you're well-dressed. And what he said was, uh, you're simple. And I said, great, I'm Forrest Gump. That's wonderful. 25 years and I'm Forrest Gump. Oh, no. And he said, no, 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 that's that. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. It's, this is a good thing because our lives are too complex and you simplify them. It's a really, really good thing. I thought it was garbage. And, but I tried it on like a new suit of clothes and it yeah. turns out everybody wanted simple. You yeah. know, I had tried future proof brands before I tried to dress myself up as some kind of genius. What people mm -hmm. wanted and what they told me that was good about me was simple. And yeah, well, that's great. And I know you've got a new line of stuff that's a uh, new line of education stuff that's coming yeah. out, the DIY stuff, DIY. So uh, and what, what are the, it's DIY. Oh, it's DIY, DIY, everything. I can decorate your home DIY. I can get rid of that plant for you. Um, DIY brand is where it starts. And uh, uh, yeah, the folks can go to um, uh, my website actually and uh, check out the, like I have a, a copy of the book there that is, it's a paper copy of the book, not the, like the, the uh, Kindle version that we're offering here. Uh, but they can also check out a thing called the Brand DIY Course. Um, yeah. And uh, they can check out a thing called the Brand DIY Playbook. And yeah. those two are just basically step-by-step -step guides. The playbook, just a guide, and the course, obviously a 10-unit course that walks you step-by-step -step on how to do research, how to innovate your product to match your promise, how to communicate all that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's basically, it's, it's, it's the simplified version. I took out all the crap that we practiced that didn't work in advertising, and I left in all the good stuff that did actually work and stuff I still use to this day. Awesome. Well, and I'm envious of that talent, uh, Mark. Like like so many other people, I, I got a thousand things in my head, and and uh, you know, and it just they all bunch bunch up, and it, you know, it just doesn't get out. So when I heard about your brand DIY, speech DIY, pitch DIY, mm -hmm. I'm just going, man, that is uh, that's absolute brilliance. Just genius. you know, it's funny because um, 
pitch DIY, mm -hmm. particularly interesting. Uh, you and I both work a lot with startups, and what these guys do is pitch for investment, and oftentimes they pitch for very serious investment, millions of dollars, just like we used to in advertising. Yeah. But they can't, especially tech guys, they can't simplify what they say. And so you ask outsiders, what's so special about what you do? And they go, well, you broadcast face-to-face. -face. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's oh, a big easy. idea, and you, you lead with that, and suddenly people are going, oh. That's kind of special, as opposed to giving all the tech reasons. And I see so many tech companies going into the weeds with the stuff they do, as opposed to just coming up with that simple thing. And that's what you know, pitch DIY is all about, brand DIY is all about. They all come back to simplifying. Yeah. Well, and here's my new here's my new phone uh, phone cover, uh, face to face broadcasting. So your genius your genius is going is going everywhere. Listen, I want to get uh, I know we we, uh, we we're late starting, mm -hmm. and so I want to get people the um, the book here so that anyone who wants to get Mark's award winning book, even if you just get the cover, print out that cover and put it somewhere. It's a brilliant cover. Here's your uh, here's your URL mm -hmm. free didn't see it coming.com slash Alex. And uh, then you'll, 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 Mark will ask you for your email address and uh, he'll send you the book instantly. Yeah. So you can have that in the next 30 seconds. And listen, I just want to thank you, Mark. For well, hold on, your hold on. Before we go here though, uh, we've got, we've got one guy, Tom here asking a question. Should we answer that? Okay. Or should we go later and yeah, answer him offline? Know, listen. So, so, so let me just, let me just, uh, let me just pause okay. you for just a sec. Uh, what I want to do is to let people know that this is the official end of uh of our session with mark but mark is going to hang around i'm going to hang around and anyone else who wants to hang around we'll hang around until the cows come home so um so with that i just wanted to give the official thank you to mark mark thank you for your generosity for your time and your book and your blog post thank you for the patience and of uh waiting for me until i got on oh, you're welcome well you have dominic uh, to, to thank for that and uh right and murray, and, and murray. Yeah, who, uh, who who kept the show going, kept the show alive. Thank you. So with so with that, thank you. But we're now gonna we're just gonna gonna kick over to uh, Mark and Tom, and uh, I'll bring in I'll bring in Brian from in Toronto. But you wanted to talk to Tom and answer. His well, question. I just saw that he was had something up on that chat, which is a cool feature too. Hey, just you can bring somebody yeah. up who's actually chatting as opposed to just answering them in chat. Wonderful feature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so what did you say, Mark? I'm involved saying, in Mark, I'm involved in reputation marketing. Do you see differences in what reputation and branding represent? Absolutely not. Reputation is just one element of the experience. Just like a logo is an element of the experience. Just like a, a tagline or a, a commercial or I don't know a website. Um, but your reputation is is do you keep your brand promise? Do you keep your brand promise? And if you do not, you will lose your reputation. That's It's a really simple thing. And you can dress it up with as many fancy patented words as you want, but it all comes down to that. Uh, are you consistent with the message that you're portraying? Does does the curtain match the carpet or whatever? You know, does the does the uh, does the, does it all line up? Does what you say? match what you do and you know god bless him i look at folks like donald trump and you go it's the absolute opposite of that you know the absolute saying one thing and doing something completely different and you know what it does it destroys your reputation yeah so yeah. i see no so diversion what is, what is reputation marketing anyway I just, i've never heard reputation of it marketing means just essentially uh you're you're selling something a lot of times people and you're you're selling it based on you're selling them based on their for example their their expertise in something you're selling them right. as influencers uh and you're protecting that you know okay now tom am okay. i right on that go ahead slam me do me a full body slam and tell me that i got that wrong <laughs> he's not answering he's laughing too hard because i'm such a newbie at this <laughs> All right. Well, listen. I'm going to bring in. I'm going to bring in Brian in Toronto. Yeah, I, yeah, so Brian is a Brian is a uh, old friend of mine. Well, I wouldn't say old. Um, I'm going to see if he's uh, if he's out there. I know he said he had some technology. He might not be there anymore. He's been waiting for uh, waiting for quite a while. And I think he was at an outdoor cafe trying to uh, tr trying right. to watch. And it, I so. see that uh, uh, Murray says you should keep your plant. And uh, you know, it offers hope. Well, you know, I really like Murray. I, I like Murray a lot, but I don't I don't agree with him and his taste in plants. <laughs> Seems like a decent enough guy. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Any other questions? Uh, I'm going to say thank you. 
No, I think we're I think we're good, uh, Mark. So I'm going to say thank you once again. I'm going to put up as we say goodbye. I'm going to put up the, uh, the, the your book cover and your URL and let anyone know they just go there and get your book and uh, read it and uh, and then go to the website and find you got all kinds of other material there as well. Wonderful, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for showing up. And uh, next week I'll send you an email. But uh, next week. <laughs> next i see other all the I, all the peanut galleries starting i think, I think you out, need right? to bring a horticulturalist on next that's what you need to do you need to bring on a plant expert <laughs> well thank you all and next week we're going to do what we're going to do a, a pro show so on tuesday we might, we'll do at least one show maybe two and we're going to talk about how to use this this uh, tool the best possible way to, for your meetings your webinars your video conferences and if you're doing live streaming to millions of people this is a tool that can help you with that as well Mark Stoibert, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you.